it's like when you get a, a new team comes up to the top le- top league in any country. They'll maybe get to Christmas and they'll have got quite a few points on the board. But by the time the fixtures reverse themselves, everybody knows what to do against them, and that's when they sort of plummet back down to their natural level. And I think that might just be what happened to us this year. Uh, I'm just trying to Which think. Is a yeah. Depressing thought. Uh, is that, no, I was just trying to think. Will we will we try to surprise them this year by playing the exact same tactics, but no, actually having <laughs> a forward in front of Samanas? Oh, I don't know yeah, what but, we're he, trying to do when I look back at it. The thing, the thing, <laughs> I think frustrates. I mentioned this a few minutes ago. Us three, but just about every Celtic fan was um, when you come this summer. We knew Victor and Gary Hooper were, were going to go. We knew Victor was definitely good. We knew the money was coming in. We made a fortune last year. We got to the Champions League this year fairly, I wouldn't say fortunately, but by the skin of our teeth, we got there against Karagandi, who are by no means a good team, just an average team. And everybody knew we needed a good number nine. Not not a guy who might play there, who can play left wing, but can go through the middle on occasion, or a guy who's a number 10, who's a link-up player. Pookie's more like a link-up player. Borichter's a white player. Samaras is a white player. You know, Stokes is more a guy who likes to fall a bit deeper, as you see when he played beside Hooper. We don't have a natural number nine. And for a, a club the size of Celtic, with that money in the bank, with the scouting system, which has been really, really good, how the board couldn't push it out a wee bit more and said, you know what, we're limits kind of two and a half to three million pounds a player at the top end. Now we're sitting in a really good position. Why don't we go and get somebody relatively young in that bracket, maybe under 25, uh, one of the other leagues, I don't know, Swedish league, Austrian league, Belgian league, you name it, for about four and a half, five million pounds. But by doing that, we're going to have to break our salary cap. And that's the challenge here. And that's what really gets in my nerves is that, whoa, it's, it's sticking rigid to that. Roughly, I've heard it's 25,000 pounds a week. May or may not be correct. But it's sticking rigid to it. But the market changes every year. Values go up. Circumstances change. We've now got more money than we've had in a long, long time. But more importantly, name me one club in world football or at the top level who doesn't have one or two players that get paid more than the rest. You know, Barcelona, you're not telling me they've got a limit and all their players. Most will have the similar amount, but you've got your three, four star players who get paid more. Madrid, Man United, even Celtic when Henrik was there and Sutton. You've got to have one, an exception for every team. And for us, again, that's when the board are letting us all down. They're just not willing to do that. And to me, it's it's, it's actually a disgrace what, what they've done over the summer. And uh, if I'm looking for somebody to blame, I, Lennon, can take some criticism. Certainly the players can take some. But for me, number one's got to be Peter Law on the Celtic board. Well, this is your saying that there. I would, I would volunteer the idea that the, probably the highest paid player at Celtic Park is the captain, Scott Brown. I mean, him and Ledley. I hear it's him and Ledley are on the same. Well, uh, as, as I mentioned the other day to you, uh, I think Joe Ledley is currently sitting in a very nice position, especially after midweek. No by his own choosing. I'm sure he'd have wanted to, for us to be flying high in the Champions League. But with him being at a contract, uh, Celtic board needing a, a feel-good factor and Joe Ledley uh, awaiting the next offer on the table to see whether he stays or, or walks away, probably goes back to Cardiff next year. That'll probably be one of his options at least. Uh, I'm sure the Celtic board will be uh, maybe editing the latest offer idea to maybe uh, give him a few more grand a week and possibly the captaincy I would offer. If only he'd never get injured so often, he would he would probably be a worthy Celtic captain. I would have made him captain right up until I was watching Lustig against Milan because if anybody needs to be captain, anybody needs to be rewarded, it's Lustig because I think he's now probably the best player we have. His attitude, his commitment, everything. I would have said Ledley before uh, Tuesday, but Michael Lustig has come on, especially when you consider the week he had, with all the nonsense with Ronaldo, and he got turned inside out by him. And uh, he kept coming back at him. And I think that's, that's the one we need to watch for leaving. If anybody's leaving, he needs to be rewarded, a new contract, whatever, and build, build a team around him for the back out of the way. We've got a lot Ledley. of good players there. We've right. got really a lot of good players, as you're saying. You mentioned Lustig, and right. he's... Sorry, 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 no, sorry, no, 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 it's purely the same subject, but just to, just to uh, quickly come on to give a name check to El Cormarco uh, from the Daily, that, from the E-Tim's Diary, who we asked for, we basically asked the readers to suggest topics for us tonight, 
So basically, Elker Marco has uh, volunteered these four points, which Hector would like you to pick up the first one, right? An idea for discussion tonight would be a bit of squad review slash post-mortem. Who should stay and who should go? For example, who is Champions League? Who is Champions League class and should be retained at all costs? He's got brackets. Um, which is struggling to pick. Uh, Lustig and Big Virgil Van Dyke. Is there anyone else you would class as CL class and must be retained at all costs? Absolutely. Who? Absolutely. I, I, well, Adam Matthews for one. I think he's a terrific player um, who he showed away at Milan and he's shown against men in Barcelona last year when he played left back. Um, he's an outstanding player. I think I think their whole defence is pretty decent. Uh, I, I think, OK, Izzy has his moments, but I think in Europe he tends to do well at that level most times. The two centre-halves I'm happy with. Forster, he'll go. Um, I'd like to think we can get a good replacement, no, for him. Do you think Mid-field he'll be away? Sorry, sorry. Be... sorry I, do, you think, absolutely. do you think he'll be away in January? Um, That's what I was thinking last night. Oh, or... well, see, the fact he said he's really happy means yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's packing his bags. Yeah, he's, he's, he's playing the game, isn't he? So I yeah. think, yeah, and do you know what? It's not a bad thing, actually, if we let him go. Because the league's going to be, the, you know, being honest here, they win that convincingly because of the current situation. But why not? Why not? If the offer's good, let him go. Absolutely. Midfield, for, for me, we talk about two things. No, I think wide, left and right, I'm fairly happy. I think we've got good options there. Good pace. But number nine, number nine, number nine. We need at least one good number nine. And we need a couple of midfielders who can do something that's quite different. And by that, what I mean is take a pass, lift their head, play a pass, move into space get the ball again and play another pass and do it quite quickly. We need a couple of players in there who, who can move about, good energy, good technique, can play a killer pass and be creative. And for me, that's what we miss. Two creative midfielders and an out-and-out out number nine. Have, for you me, that's been, what we need. have you been watching Dundee United on sports scene on a Sunday night again? I mean, who are they playing against? <laughs> Partick Thistle. I know. And, you know, to be fair, you mentioned Champions League. Partick Thistle is a different level from playing against the Milans and Barca's. I think the boy Gold looks a cracking player. Um, but, you know, Partick Thistle is one thing, isn't it? Yep. Well, that, that well, Gold was the one that came on against us in the semi final last year, wasn't it? And he looked a player then. That was the first time I'd seen him. The 4 3 game, remember? Right, Ralph. He came on then, exactly the same. Ralph, over to you, the next point. Who is worth keeping for the SPFL? And Ort or is still young enough to get better, and he's put brackets Forest. Uh, I don't know if we, I don't know if we're able to touch upon, for want of a better phrase, the current James Forrest situation. Uh, so we'll uh, I don't think that needs any more exposure <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> I think I perfectly summed up. So let's not try and cock up with any more discussion. But Ralph, oh, oh, <laughs> who is worth well, keeping for the S- SPFL or is still young enough to get better? Well, we're trying to keep Al Camacho for the SPL because he fills a seat in the Tarrier carrier. <laughs> but he come up, he, yeah, he came up with uh, to the two Champions League games. Uh, Forster, we're not going to keep our way. He's going to be away. Uh, he does seem to have a wee bit more gratitude towards Celtic just lately. He keeps speaking of how he's developed as a player and everything else. It's because he wants away. Who are we kidding? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think we should sell him before people realise that he's not quite the keeper that he... Has maybe cracked up to be <laughs> so a uh, defense like you oh, just yeah. said uh, we've got an outstanding defense Lustig Ambrose Van Dyke Ezeguera all first choice you've got uh, I've not mentioned Adam Matthews there because I think as a an attacking right sided midfielder he's he's been sadly missed in the campaign actually probably more so than Brown uh, Brown I, I've had enough of him now that's too many times uh, Ledley, you would I would hope to keep, and Commons I would hope to keep. As for the rest of them, there isn't anybody stands out. But you would have to give more of a chance to the likes of Puki and Baructa, and what simply be, because what look you... at Ambrose last season. Ambrose last season was a, a disaster area. This season he's settled into the team and he's part of the probably the best centre half partnership since Stubbs and Reaper. Uh, Rogic, again, he's not been given a chance. Lennon seemed to have judged an awful lot of people on that Morton game, and that's grossly unfair. But then again, would Rogic be able to walk into the team and compete at the highest level? 
That's another project, isn't it? But, but Which again, one do you know? I will. Apparently, well, apparently, there's there's worries he may not get enough game time to merit a place in the squad, even though he's seen as uh, the future of Australian football. The Australian boss is like basically saying, "Please get him either out on loan so he can get playing time." Because ah, he but he's part the, the old Australian boss that's looking for a player to help him out in Japan. I, so I, 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 I appreciate that. We merit to that. Than... Uh, but again, but even if that's the case, it's, what, what's the point in? Got to all the hassle or getting these work permits, etc., and then you never see these people. I mean, it's, it just always seems just quite, quite weird. And or else, like we go and sign somebody like Puki and pers- we persevere with somebody like him, but we don't give a player like Rodrik a chance. Now again, I, I, I'm unaware if it's just either injuries or else he's really, really poor on the training ground that he's not impressing uh, the boss Monday to Friday, so doesn't t- doesn't get a game on Saturday. But it just, uh, it just makes me ask a lot of questions like, uh, about what actually goes on in Neil Lennon's head sometimes. It's great. For it's an elite, but has it, have we made any progress in the actual where, where we should have? Where we could have? Uh, that's a better phrase. I appreciate that we've, we've lost a lot of quality to help balance the books. But could we maybe be actually like, again, we always just come back to, can we be making earlier substitutions? to try and get these players on, or are we actually, like that Aberdeen game last week, we had to score two goals in the last five minutes. You know what I mean? Are we, are we actually no progressing that much that we can give these new people a, a, the rightful chance they deserve? But there are too many people in that team that know they're going to get a game no matter how badly they play. Uh, Charlie Mulgrew should be a, a sort of stand-in for the likes of the centre-halves or the left-back or people or first-choice players that can he play because they're injured or suspended and he should be an able deputy. He shouldn't be the guy that the midfield's built around. But it doesn't matter what he does. Same with James Forrest. It doesn't matter what happens. They'll always get picked up for fit and they're just not up to it. Or they are up to it, but they think they don't have to be. Right, Hector, a good... A good ugly question for you. We're, we're trying to do the good, the bad and ugly tonight with the Milan Stroke Spaghetti Western gags. Uh, who should be sold slash driven to the airport? And uh, El Camarco suggests, suggests Kaya, Kayal, which I think is a bit severe on him because he can only do what he can when he gets a chance. And obviously Scott Brown's in his place. Who would you suggest? <clears throat> Sammy? No, I like Sammy. Um, he's just clearly not a striker, as we've known for five years now. Um, oh, who would I? Who would I? Aye, Kyle. <laughs> he's a heedless. He's a heedless chicken. Um, he really is, and I've said this before. He's got no positional discipline whatsoever. He's injured every second week. But who would take him? Forster. I would sell Forster in January. The time to cash in in him and get another keeper in. And. Let me think, we must have 24 guys who don't play as a striker up front. We must have one or two of them we can move on. But you know what? I, I, history's taught me, don't have the knee-jerk reaction. You know, this was a Champions League. Uh, we, we didn't. We weren't as good as last year. We had better players last year. Um, and it's a mistake that the club did for me this summer. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a knee-jerk. One or two, no more than that. But, that. but that's a good point you're making regards knee-jerk. The fact that, see, you've got like, fans like us tonight talking about what, what should we be doing these are the sort of things we expect the club to be doing. And then I think, obviously, that there was there, there appears to be in our eyes quite a few panic buys have appeared. Obviously, plans didn't work out, but maybe that should be a lesson the club's got to learn this season. But they won't learn, will they? they won't, but, but, but that's why maybe we're just... Are we, are we getting more realistic now, or are we still being a wee bit blinded by optimism? Come, come, And it's not even August, it'll be July next year when we've got to start looking at these crazy qualifiers. And you've also got the World Cup, so they'll, they'll delay that again, hoping that some obscure guy, for, I don't, again, I was going to say Egypt, but I don't you know, whoever, whoever, some obscure team are in the World Cup and suddenly uh, one of their players has a blind on John Park spots or whatever that we can pick up for a couple of quid. So we're going to wait to the end of the World Cup before we start scouting again, that sort of idea, which seems a bit of a worry. I don't, it's, it's, listen, it's, it's hard because we, you're, you're right what you said there, we're all talking about it, we're having similar conversations to... Guys who meet their mates in the pub for a pint or go to the match on Tuesday or, or the next Celtic match at Parkhead or, or online, the various forums, we're saying the exact same things. But do you think that matters a damn to the Celtic board? I think what the last few years have shown is that no, it doesn't. They've got their own plan 
which they are going to strictly adhere to. And the fact